Hi, I'm Ian and I'm the Lonely Chef. And we have a fabulously funny show for you in the next half an hour. At the end of the show, there's a number and I want you to jot it down and, and call me because, well, I'm single and I'm looking for a date and possibly a relationship and who knows, maybe even marriage. I'm looking to meet somebody special. I'm fabulously wealthy. I want to settle down and I want to share this wealth with that special person and just live happily ever after. So enjoy the show and hopefully we'll meet. Until we do, goodbye. Oh, uh, one more thing. <laughs> I do happen to lie an awful lot. <laughs> Lonely, I've been searching for so long. Lonely, only hoping you're the one who will change my life and make these dreams come true. No, 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 Garth, I, I just can't do it. I mean, man, I, I wrote your five last top number tunes. I mean, they all went to number one on the hip parade. What do you expect me to do? No, no, I'm not, no, no, I, I'm not, I'm not going to stand in for you at your concerts. It's out of the question. Uh, I, I, I'm not that kind of person. I'm, I'm an honorable person, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, all right, well, listen, uh, I, I can't talk any longer. I, I've got some stuff. I've got a date happening tonight, Garth, so I, I, I can't spend any more time with you. And uh, actually, I'm going to play my very own video, which uh, I think will give you a run for your money. Yeah, all right, okay, talk at you later. Uh, well, that was Garth uh, wanting another couple of songs for me, uh, from me, and um, it was the kind of thing that uh, I think uh, we're gonna get into in this show. It's uh, a Western theme, and uh, for the first time, you're going to see me sing, and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty good. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'll uh, be back in a couple of seconds, and uh, we'll get on to cooking up some prairie chickens. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, now do we have a recipe for you? Now these are little prairie chickens. They're actually from Africa where I was uh, assigned by National Geographic to uh, use my Western roping skills at uh, bringing in 30 untamed rare rhinoceroses. Um, on the way back, I just happened to spot these little critters and I lassoed them around the legs as they were running at about 30 miles an hour. It uh, takes a special skill. And I don't know if you know this or not, but I am a world champion rodeo, uh, uh, whatever, I, in all events. And uh, you see the magazine cover that uh, I've just been on. Uh, I was the champion Brahma bull rider for, uh, oh, for all of America. In fact, uh, for most of the world. I was going to cook up a Brahma bull hump, but it's very difficult to find uh, around here, so I took these, this, these little prairie chickens. But I want to show you something really kind of neat, because this was an opportunity for me to put something together for this special girl called Melody. So what I did, I got a friend of mine, a fellow called Todd Smallwood, who actually wrote the theme of this uh, song, and we put a little love song together for this girl, and you're going to have the first exclusive look at it, right now. So here we go. Take 
my love and walk away I guess there's nothing left to say Should have known it from the start You were playing with my heart Now I'm left out in the rain Take my heart and let it go I don't need it anymore Just remember there's a love you can believe Though you left it in the cold Save it for a rainy day When the clouds won't blow away As the thunder's growing strong And you wonder what went you lost along the way Save it for a rainy day Now there's nothing more to say yeah. Darling, all my love is yours Keep my heart forevermore and Save it for a rainy day What can I say? It moves me all the time. I mean, I'm just such a gentle kind of guy. <laughs> Sensitive. That's me. Oh, well, so much for that stuff. Let's get on with the stuff. Now, that video, incidentally, was edited by Roly White. And he did a super job, and he put on all those little special effects. And thank you, Roly. You did a great job. Anyway, let's get on to the, uh, the rest of this recipe here. And these are the little African game hens. And... We're going to cook these little babies up. But first, what we're going to do, I've uh, uh, quartered an orange here. We're going to put some orange right into the cavity of these birds and uh, keep them filled out like this. And what happens with this is that as the uh, birds cook in the oven, you have this delicious orange taste coming from the inside. And we also put in a few little grapes, like so. Just put them in here. And this mixture of uh, grapes and oranges I've used in other things. Uh, it's just a, a, a beautiful citrus type of taste that evolves uh, through the cooking of this bird. Now, one of the secrets to this is to put in just a touch of honey. 
Now, it's kind of difficult putting honey into these things, and the only way that you can really do it is just hold the bird up and pour in that honey like so. Ooh. Doesn't that look nice? And that honey and th those fruits uh, just, whoops. Whoa, 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 little doggy. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> anyway, that's what we do. Now, these, uh, uh, the honey will tend to uh, uh, drip out of there, but that doesn't matter because it will be basting in its own juices in the honey. And what happens is they just come out so nice and crispy and brown and uh, delicious. So we'll put those into a pan and slip them into the oven. Oh, we don't need the rack here. And uh, put those in here like this. Get that out. Now, it only takes about 45 minutes for these things to cook. It doesn't take very long at all. And uh, we'll put them in the oven with another little liqueur at the end, which will just uh, flambe these things into absolute perfection. So I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned because Melody is going to be coming through this door in just a fraction of a second. See you. <laughs> Well, we're back here and uh, we've uh, been preparing these things while we've been away and the hens are already in the oven. Uh, well, uh, as you remember in the last segment, we uh, had a pretty nice video. We've already been informed that it's gone platinum uh, in <laughs> 30 different countries, in fact. Uh, it was an independent release, but if you'd like this, you know, we can, uh, we can, uh, oh, just a second, there's a phone, just a second, it's, what did I do with that? Oh, here we go. Yeah? Who? Oh, well, uh, how's things at Capitol Records? Hey, they've seen the record on the show, and they're talking about a record deal. Capitol Records, hey. <laughs> yeah? All right. OK, hey, that's great. Fabulous. Hey. <laughs> well, you're going to be the first ones to know it's a 12-album deal by Capitol Records. <laughs> yeah, uh, we buy the first one at 99 cents and then the rest at regular price over the rest of the year. So anyway, uh, we'll get on with dessert here and uh, also serve up this meal. Uh, but I was, uh, before the phone rang, I was talking about uh, the uh, song having gone platinum in over 30 countries, I believe. And um, we've just written another song for Willie and we've called this one to all the hens I've known before. Oh. All right. <laughs> OK, here we go. For dessert, we have a very special thing. We're taking some pear halves. And uh, these are your normal uh, canned pears. And we put them into the, uh, the dishes here. And <clears throat> this is a little bit different. And, it's nice if you've got fresh pears, but this particular recipe calls for canned pears. There's a reason for it. Uh, we use the cans when we go riding in the rodeos to scare the cattle, so that's <laughs> what we do. But uh, we uh, uh, do have these pears, and we put them into the plates like this. Now, this is what really makes this special. We take ordinary concentrated lime juice, and we pour this over here, just like so. And if you could smell that lime juice, what happens is the pears and the lime juices mix together. And after about five minutes, uh, the pears become soaked with this lime and you have this soft, sensuous taste that just sort of revolves around the tongue and slides down so easy. It's really kind of nice. So very simple. I mean, it takes, you saw me prepare, it takes about 30 seconds and it's so very, very easy. Now, one thing uh, I've mentioned before is that I don't, get into the measurements and teaspoons and bits and pieces like that uh, because we have time constraints on the show. And so what we do is we have a little video at the end and uh, it's of each particular show that we tape here. And you can phone and order that. And we also have recipe books with all of the information. We have uh, a total of 30 books and they're so popular 
that we have already sold over 30 million of those books. Now, uh, we'll put those aside and we'll bring the hens out of the oven, if I can find my little gloves here. Whoa, get ready for it. <laughs> now, look at these. Oh, they are so delicious. Can you see that? Doesn't that look nice? See, the honey is set up there as a glaze with all the fruit and so on. It's just going to be absolutely delicious. So what we'll do is we'll take them out, put them on the plate. Now, this is a real hearty meal for Melody, and uh, she's going to absolutely love this. Now, normally, I cook this when I'm on the trail with the uh, 30,000 head that I own in Texas. <laughs> and um, we usually drive these cattle all the way from Texas up to Vancouver, British Columbia, and we have a big barbecue. <laughs> we have a big barbecue for the staff of my various uh, companies, which totals almost 30,000 people. So, anyway, uh, we come now to the serving of the vegetables. And they're just basic stock, uh, you know, nice vegetables. So we'll get a, a little spoon here. Where did I do that? What did, what did I do with that spoon? It's around here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When you don't have a spoon, you just uh, reach out and touch someone. They'll get it pretty fast. So what we do is we just put on some nice uh, vegetables. In this instance, it's uh, Texas garden peas. Now, I did, as I mentioned before, ride about 30 miles to uh, my vegetable patch, which uh, is a secret place. Uh, we have herbs by all the thousand. We have uh, vegetables and uh, these potatoes, actually, I rode all the way to Ireland to get these. These are Irish potatoes. And I don't know if I told you this, but my grandfather was actually the original Pony Express rider. And uh, my great grandmother was the original Pony Express horse. Uh, no, just, 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 just joking, just joking, just joking. Uh, but anyway, we'll put some carrots on here. And uh, what we do is take a little bit of the honey sauce out of the, uh, the basting pan and uh, we just pour this over the vegetables and it's just absolutely delicious. So, this is the meal that I'm preparing for Melody. Did I ever tell you how I met Melody? No. I don't think I did, did I? Well, it was an interesting story because uh, Melody was on this horse that was out of control. It was going about 30 miles an hour. <laughs> what I had to do was to employ some pretty fancy uh, trick riding and uh, as this horse galloped by under, out of control, it was a very big uh, horse, about 30 hands. And um, that's a pretty big horse, if you know anything about horses. And um, anyway, I saved her. Uh, it was a damsel in distress, and she was so grateful that she uh, agreed to have uh, a date with me. So she's going to be coming through the door in just a couple of minutes. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, this is the meal. And uh, I hope that you try this because it is truly delicious. It's uh, African prairie chickens or Cornish rock hens, whatever you want to call them, uh, <laughs> basted in honey, stuffed with fruit, and it's absolutely delicious. So stay with us and we'll be back and meet Melody in just a second. <laughs> Okay, we're just winding down now and uh, Melody will be arriving in just a few minutes and we're going to just ride that romantic trail together. So, all right, but just to finish off, we, <laughs> just to finish off, we uh, are going to put some whipped cream on top of this lime and pear dessert. And uh, as I said, it's just delicious and you need to try it. So what we do is we just put in some cream, as much as you need for the evening a little sugar, and put it into the blender. Now, one of the exciting things, one of the exciting things that we are going to do is this. We've had such a response already. Just a second, let me turn this blender off. We have had such a response to that song that we have decided at this very moment 
to put together a songwriting contest. Now, everybody out there, what we want you to do is to write a country and western song and send it to us. Now, it must contain the words lonely and it must contain the word chef. So if you can think of a country and western song that has those words in it, send it in. What we'll do is you don't have to do a fancy job in recording. We just basically need the lyrics. If we pick it, what we'll do is we'll take you into our own little studio. We'll produce it to record level. And then we will invite you as our guest on the show, and you'll be my date. And we'll also put you up at the beautiful Fantasyland Hotel. And we'll let you have a bottle of champagne in your room when you arrive. And we'll also treat you to two beautiful days of shopping at one of the world's largest shopping malls. So it sounds absolutely great. Anyway, we'll put uh, a little cream on the uh, pears. It doesn't have to be that thick. It just needs to cover the pears. And that's just, whoa, getting excited here. And we'll move this over to the table. Now, doesn't this look absolutely delicious? Oh my gosh, doesn't that look wonderful? Now, this is the kind of meal, oh, Melody's here. Okay, let's go. Let me just check myself. Oh, am I suitably Western? Melody, how are you? I'm fine. Glad to see you're okay after that horse ran away with you. <laughs> well, I've uh, got a couple of saddles here just in case we want to jump into the saddle later. That's good. And uh, practice our roping skills. And um, I have this beautiful meal prepared for mm. Mel Melody, sit down. Now, uh, if you remember, uh, Melody was the young girl that I saved from the bolting horse. And, uh, well, I'm just glad that you got off that horse safely. I thought and, it was the other way around. Uh, what do you mean? Well, that horse took off with you at about 30 miles an hour, and I had a terrible time getting him to stop and let you off. <laughs> well, it's not exactly as... <laughs> That's not exactly as I recollected, but let me talk about something else here. Um, let's have a toast to uh, safe riding. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. It was a joy and a pleasure. I think you'll love this meal, these Cornish game hens that I got from Africa when I was uh, lassoing the rare rhinoceros rhinoceroses for National Geographic are absolutely delicious. Um, well, what can I say? Let's dig in. Ah. So what have you been up to? Well, I was at a rodeo again just a couple weeks ago. Uh-huh. And uh, they, they were having the Rodeo Queen contest. Uh-huh. For a copy of the program or the Lonely Chef cookbook or to be my special guest, call 1-800-665-CHEF. Or if you'd like to write to me personally, my address is P.O. Box 740, Everson, Washington, 98247. And when taping The Lonely Chef, I stay at the beautiful Fantasyland Hotel and Resort, which is part of the adventure of the West Edmonton Mall. Join me.